Alright, so, hi again, internet. I'm here to tell you guys about why most of the games you play probably suck, because, let's face it, they do. Most of you people have no taste whatsoever in video games at all. So I'm just here to enlighten you guys a little bit on the games you should be playing and why the ones you play probably suck. So, let's get started here. So number one is that you probably only play the popular stuff, like I'm sure you guys watching this probably only play your Call of Duties and your Battlefields or your Halos, and I'm sure you think you're some super awesome gamer because you play Call of Duty, but none of you know what a real game is, okay? I bet none of you guys have ever played a foreign game, like I've got this one import game from like... North Korea or something. None of it's even in English. That's how awesome it is. But like, I'm sure none of you guys have ever played a game like that. Oh no! God forbid you have to play a game that you have to think in. Oh, we couldn't have that now, could we? If you guys could just learn to stop playing all this mainstream garbage that the big corporations spew out at you, and you actually played something with some intellectual depth, you'd probably be playing as games as good as the ones that I play right now. But you're not. That's why I'm making this list. Brings me into my next point, which is that none of the games that you guys play actually make you think about anything. And I know what you're thinking, like, oh, wait, I've played Bioshock. That's a super smart game. But let me tell you something. That game isn't smart at all. That game is cliche and repetitive, and I saw that twist coming a mile away. I mean that twist where that one doctor, like Steinberger or something, he turns out to be crazy, and he's the bad guy, and you have to kill him. Like, I saw that twist coming from a mile away. And I mean, come on, why would you put that twist in the beginning of your game? That game really could have benefited from, like, a big mid-game twist where, like, you found out that everything you were doing was actually, like, made you the bad guy or something, or it wasn't actually your choice. Like, if that game had had some kind of mid-game twist, it could have been so much better. But of course not, because that would have made people have to think. I mean, that Korean import game I've got, right? Like, it's got this one twist where you're playing the game, but then you find out that your character doesn't actually exist, like, at all, and the whole game has just been inside the head of another dude, but then as you go through the story, you find out that that second dude doesn't exist either. And it's just like such this brilliant commentary on just like how life goes and how meaningless it can all be. And it's just so deep and brilliant. But of course, you guys have never played a game like that because you probably couldn't understand it in the first place. Because like I said earlier, you're too busy playing your mainstream games and your Call of Duties and whatnot. And my third point, which kind of ties into my first one, is that all you guys only play are the mainstream games, and none of you have any appreciation for independent art. And I'm not talking about, like, that Jonathan Blow guy. He's a poser, okay? I'm talking about, like, the real games that are made by one dude in a basement and are just like you walking through the desert for, like, six hours, and then they end. They're super brilliant, but no one plays them because they're indie, and no one knows how to appreciate an indie game. Or there's this one indie game where you just like stand at a bus stop and wait for the bus to come, but the bus is super late, so you have to wait a long time. But the really brilliant thing is that the game moves in real time, so if the bus is 30 minutes late, you actually have to wait 30 minutes. And it's just such a brilliant message on how like nothing we do really matters, and we can't actually control anything. And it's kind of super deep message that you could only get out of an indie game. So, of course, none of you appreciate it, and everyone's like, oh, this game is really stupid because all you do is stand in one place and you can't even move. No, that's the point. But none of you people are smart enough to understand it. Obviously, which is why you need me here talking about these games, so that you can learn about them and finally understand what real culture and art is. So there you have it. There's three brilliant reasons why all the games you play probably suck. Now, if you were smart and had amazing tastes like me, you'd put down your Call of Duty crap, you'd go pick up a latte, and you'd go play some of these games I told you about, but you probably won't. 
And if you do, then I wish you lived in my city, because we could go hang out in Starbucks and sip some espresso and talk about, like, obscure things and stuff. But you don't, and you won't. So bye.